Finland's parliament overwhelmingly backs NATO membership, but Sanna Marin's government still needs Turkey and Hungary to ratify the bid. Hundreds of students in Iran have reportedly been affected by suspected poisoning, and what some have said is an attempt to close schools for girls. The son of Iran's former deposed Shah says that the West must keep up the pressure on Tehran if it's to see any results. China kicks back at comments made by the FBI over the origin of the coronavirus and has said that these have only served to damage the country's credibility. A huge opportunity. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak heads to Northern Ireland to sell the benefits of his new Brexit trade deal. Finland's parliament has overwhelmingly approved the country's bid to join NATO, clearing the last national hurdle for membership of the Western Military Alliance. The move was backed by 184 votes to seven, with MPs also signing off on the law required to put it into practice. The vote was initiated by Prime Minister Sanna Marin's government, which wanted to get it through before April's election, even though two NATO countries, Turkey and Hungary, have not yet ratified either the Finnish membership bid or that of neighbouring Sweden. Both countries moved to join in May last year, alarmed by Russia's invasion of Ukraine three months earlier. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, seen here with the Turkish Foreign Minister last month, said this week that membership for Finland and Sweden is a top priority for the alliance and urged Turkey and Hungary to urgently ratify their accession. Turkey has agreed to resume talks with both countries to iron out obstacles. Over 800 students in Iran have allegedly been poisoned at some 30 schools across the country since November. Authorities who initially dismissed these cases say they could be intentional attacks to, quote, close all schools, especially girls. On Wednesday, over 100 young girls were hospitalized because of the suspected poisoning. No casualties have been reported. So far, only one school for boys has been targeted. Education is compulsory in Iran, and girls represent the majority of students in its universities. These reported attacks follow months of anti-government protests after the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini in September. In the wake of the protests in Iran, the oldest son of the former Shah has linked up with young activists to establish an alliance against the Islamic Republic. Reza Pahlavi, currently touring Europe, told Euronews what he wants from the West. He helped his compatriots dodge the regime's internet suppression, founding long labor strikes, and to sanction the Islamic Revolutionary Guard. By further uh, adding pressure on the regime by sanctioning the RGC and uh, stating it as a terrorist organization, could bring even more abilities to uh, freeze their assets, which is certainly uh, a big chunk. And also, it will at the same time create an element that will make it even more likely for defections to occur. The bulk of the IRGC members are not benefiting from it financially. They are getting salaries, sometimes not enough to cope with. They even have to have a secondary job. How long can they sustain themselves in that package? If they think that the time has come for them to reconsider how long they want to stick with this regime as opposed to join with the people. So assuming that the Islamic Republic falls, what would be the role that you would run for? Do you see yourself as, as the new Shah of Iran, as your father used to be? It's not a matter of what position I end up with, nor am I running for any office. However, my role is very important in terms of the political capital that I enjoy to bring as much uh, solidarity on a common uh, mission that drives us to manage the period of transition towards the formation of a constituent assembly, which is the only vehicle through which people's representatives will have to make all the decisions necessary in adopting a new constitution, debate the content of the future system, to be finally ratified by means of a referendum. You know, it is said that one day in the past, the Western <laughs> countries actually fearing that Iran could become a superpower uh, pulled your father from the throne. Do you share this view? We, we know one thing from our domestic perspective, that Iran could have been a South Korea 
Instead, it became a North Korea. In other words, we went backwards rather than forward. Is that conducive to more stability? No. Is Iran weakness something that has contributed to more safety or economic interest, or is has actually been the reverse? Every arrow points to the direction that if that theory held true, the net results was no gain, but in fact a loss. Does that also mean that the West should uh, worry for the growing military cooperation between Iran and Russia right now? Well, obviously, because uh, when you have a, a regime that out of weakness is prepared to become uh, somehow uh, at the disposal or uh, uh, used by other players in the region, the net net result is that uh, this could become a, um, a threat to, to, to another perspective. Iran's cooperation right now with Russia is a clear indication that the regime is in fact trying to count on Russia's support for their own survival and, in, and is in that game uh, as assisting uh, what Russia is doing right now in the Ukraine, for instance. China retaliates after the FBI resurrects the theory that the coronavirus pandemic originated from a Wuhan laboratory leak. This hypothesis, which has never been formally confirmed, affects the United States' credibility, says Beijing, and comes at a time when tensions between the two nations are at a high. The man behind the comments has been the FBI director himself, Christopher Wray. Many scientists have rejected the lab leak theory as lacking in evidence and other government agencies have drawn differing conclusions to the bureaus. Some of them have said, but with a low level of certainty, that the virus did not start in a lab but instead could have jumped from animals to humans at one of Wuhan's seafood markets. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was buoyant after a mostly warm reception across the political spectrum for his new Windsor framework deal aimed at smoothing post-Brexit trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Sunak said the deal gives Northern Ireland a strong economic opportunity. In fact, I'm, I'm over the moon that yesterday we managed to have a decisive breakthrough with our negotiations with the EU. Northern Ireland is in the unbelievably special position, unique position in the entire world, European continent, in having privileged access, not just to the UK home market, which is enormous, fifth biggest in the world, but also the European Union single market. However, the main unionist party in Northern Ireland, the DUP, has yet to give its approval, which is crucial to re-establishing the province's devolved parliament. It is a huge breakthrough. Uh, this reflects much improved relations between the United Kingdom and the European Union. It's a personal triumph for Rishi Sunak. It's a triumph also for the President of the European Commission. Uh, and there's only one boulder left in the road, and that is the Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland. They could turn victory into defeat if they say no to this deal. For local businesses like this garden centre, it's more about the economy than politics. Um, we're very, very optimistic about what this new offer is. Nobody knows the fine details yet, um, but it seems like a big relief. Um, it, we honestly think it could be a game changer that all of a sudden we can actually source plants from England again. Um, it could speed up the deliveries coming from the mainland. Under the terms of the Good Friday Agreement, all main parties need to share power for a government to be formed. If accepted by the DUP, this deal could pave the way for the province's politicians to finally get back to work after over a year of deadlock. The pharmaceutical industry is battling to reform European legislation on medicines. At the end of March, the European Commission will present plans to revise the EU pharmaceuticals legislation in what will be an update to a 20-year-old text. In this high-stakes game of influence, the industry is stepping up its lobbying efforts to make its voice heard. Part of its action plan is already visible in the heart of the European quarter in Brussels. Its advertising campaign highlights the ever-widening gap between the EU and its American and Asian competitors in terms of investment and access to the latest treatments. 
two summers ago. There are some significant gaps. The investment gap in the, between the U.S. and the EU 20 years ago was 2 billion euros, and now it's 25 billion euros. That's a thousand percent increase in gap, and that's very worrying. That trend continues, and we want to stop it and reverse it. The sector adds that 25 years ago, 50 percent of new treatments came from Europe, whereas today only one in five new ones do so. It's why the pharmaceutical industry is alarmed by the Commission's possible new plans. They say it could threaten European competitiveness and employment, especially when some companies are beginning to transfer some of their activities outside of the EU. In recent years, we've seen, unfortunately, a move of clinical research uh, to other parts of the world. We've seen investment moving again uh, to the U.S. and other parts of the world. The U.S. has taken what used to be Europe's leading advantage uh, for biotechnology, and now it's in the U.S., and we'd like to see Europe reclaim uh, that role. One thing working in big farmers' favor, though, is their economic weight. The sector is worth 43 billion euros per year when it comes to research and development. It directly employs 840,000 people and supports as many as 2.5 million jobs in the EU. Inevitably, it can flex its muscles, so to speak. For the moment, though, the Commission is plodding on with its work, stressing that the aim of the pharmaceuticals reform is to strike the right balance between promoting innovation and ensuring access to affordable medicines across the EU.